Now here's a video that I've been wanting to make for a while now. I actually forgot that I had this video saved up on my computer, but I think it's a really interesting one. I want you right now to forget about how good LeBron and Carmelo are right now. Forget who's better, forget who's won the championships, and bring yourself back to the 2003 NBA season, where you didn't know who was going to be a better player. I will say that I agreed that the NBA gave it to the right player for the Rookie of the Year, but I also think that Carmelo Anthony has an extremely strong case, and I wouldn't be surprised that if after you watch this video, some people may think that Carmelo Anthony actually should have won Rookie of the Year and beat LeBron James, but it's up for debate. Let's get into it. I will admit that LeBron James is one of the top five players of all time. I could argue that he's top three or even top two, but that doesn't cover up what he did in his rookie season, which don't get me wrong, it was amazing. He is amazing. One of the only three rookies in NBA history to average at least 20 points, five assists, and five rebounds at that time. The only other two players at that time of 2003 was Oscar Robertson and Michael Jordan. He was an incredible player, especially since all the hype was on him that year, and he lived up to the name of the chosen one. He was a beast on the court. However, when he was awarded Rookie of the Year, another player could have easily taken it from him. Carmelo Anthony. Okay, now let's compare the two players in their rookie seasons, obviously. LeBron averaged 20.9 points, 5.5 rebounds, and 5.9 assists per game that year, becoming only the third rookie in NBA history to average a 25-5 and line, per basketball reference. Anthony, meanwhile, averaged 21 points, 6 rebounds, 2.8 assists per game, but had a higher field goal percentage and more win shares than LeBron James. He also helped guide Denver into the playoffs while Cleveland didn't make the 2004 postseason. To make it clearer to compare, here is a side-by-side -side comparison between LeBron James and Carmelo Anthony that season. As you can see, LeBron, he is a beast. 25 and 5, more of an all-around player, but Melo, win shares is higher, field goal is higher, PER is not as high, obviously. Assist, we know Carmelo Anthony doesn't pass the ball. I guess the last couple of seasons he's improved with a terrible New York team apart from pretty much Paul Zingas. Derrick Rose is... I, I don't even know how Derrick Rose is anymore. Like, I can't even understand him. I don't know what he is. He's a point guard, but he can't shoot. He sort of gets assists here and there. He's kind of still got athleticism, but he doesn't even, like, dunk anymore. He's a, he's a weird player. It'll be interesting to see what happens with Derrick Rose, but we're going off topic right now. I want to ask you, who would you have chosen as the Rookie of the Year? Just by looking at the stats, Carmelo has LeBron in points, rebounds, field goal percentage, and a higher win share, which, when you break it down, is four out of the six categories. Now, this is good and all, but it still doesn't mean Carmelo Anthony should have won Rookie of the Year, since it's not mentioning defense, and well, let's just say we all know who is better on that side of the floor. LeBron James or Carmelo Anthony with defense? Yeah, we don't really need a brain surgeon to figure that one out, just if you watch a basketball game, you know who's better. But it still gives you a rough idea of how similar LeBron and Melo were, and honestly, Melo's offensive game was better at that time, just by looking at these stats. Not by much, but it was better. Now, let's look at the actual wins between the two players, because I always hear the argument that LeBron James had much worse players than Melo did, and that his team was far worse in the NBA before LeBron got to Cleveland, but when you actually break it down, the year before they both got drafted in 2003, the Cavaliers and Nuggets both finished with exactly the same record, a record of 17 and 65. Keep in mind that the Nuggets did play in a stacked Western Conference that year, and to give you an idea of how stacked that conference was, the Pistons, who were the first seed in the East, would have tied 5th in the West, but possibly even the 7th seed had they versed more Western Conference teams, which that is crazy, going from either the 1st seed in the East to either the 5th or 7th seed, or 6th seed, that is crazy, but anyway, back to my point, the Nuggets and the Cavs both had a record of 17 and 65 before they drafted LeBron and Melo respectively. Those records changed the next season, however. The Nuggets rose from 17 wins to 43 wins and made the playoffs in a stacked Western Conference keep in mind, whilst the Cavaliers went from 17 to 35, which is still a major improvement, but they didn't make the playoffs. So, as LeBron James took the Cavaliers plus 18 wins that year for a 35-47 record, but failed to make the playoffs in the weak Eastern Conference, Carmelo, however, became the second youngest player to score 30 points in a game since the ABA-NBA merger, the other player being Kobe Bryant, 
Anthony was also third youngest to reach 1,000 points, but the impressive stat that most stood out was how Carmelo Anthony led the Denver Nuggets, who were tied for the worst record in the NBA the previous season, to a 43-39 record. This meant the Nuggets made the playoffs for the 8th seed in a very tough Western Conference with Minnesota, Sacramento, San Antonio, the Lakers, Dallas. These, these guys were really, really good teams. And the fact that Kamala Anthony led them to the playoffs, comparing to what they had before previously, that's a pretty good effort. But in fact, if you want to talk about players winning that year, I still think that Dwayne Waves deserves recognition for taking Miami into the second round of the playoffs and finishing as the fourth seed in his rookie year. But hey, that's none of my business. I guess I'm just salty that he's not in Miami anymore. <laughs> anyway, this is pretty much where I want to ask you. Who do you think really should have won Rookie of the Year in 2004? In hindsight, picking LeBron James for Rookie of the Year will look good when he makes it to the Hall of Fame. But Carmelo Anthony has his case as well. And I just hope this video, I guess, changes some people's opinion on Carmelo Anthony because I know he cops a lot of criticism now. And personally, I love Melo. I've always been a fan of Melo. I loved him when he was in Denver, That the cornrows, man. That was Carmelo Anthony. That was cool. Obviously, when he went to New York, they had a little bit of success. Not the amount of success that they wished they could have had. But now he just cops criticism every single day. And I wanted to make this video hopefully just sharing some insight on who you think should have won Rookie of the Year. Because Carmelo Anthony seriously has a case. The reason I said that at the start I'd still have LeBron James winning it is because LeBron had an all-around game, even coming into the NBA as an 18-year-old. He made his teammates better offensively, but most importantly defensively as well, which is where Melo kind of lacks. Another thing is LeBron was in a team with only Boozer as solid help. Carmelo had Nene, Miller, Camby, and a bunch of other veteran role players, so take that as you will. I guess the team was a little bit better on Denver, but in saying that, Melo going from the worst record to the NBA to the playoffs is still a great effort. Also, once again, LeBron James was and still is a much more versatile player as he can play through one to four positions in the NBA, which is crazy from point guard to power forward. Even if he played center, he would do some work and he can give any player trouble, which is why Melo didn't win rookie of the year and LeBron James did. He's just a way more all around player than Carmelo Anthony, who only really plays small forward and a little bit of power forward here and there which in the end is why LeBron James won. Plus, if any voters had lingering doubts about the 2004 Rookie of the Year race, LeBron James' second season in the NBA would have silenced critics everywhere. From that point on, Kamau Anthony would never come close to dethroning LeBron James as the league's best small forward. I mean, even now, we can clearly tell who the better player is. But if you look at the 2003-04 season, it is really close. And that is what we're just looking at. We are just looking at the Rookie of the Year in 2004. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know who you think should have won Rookie of the Year. And if you're new around here and you want to see more videos just like this one, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And if we can smash 3,000 likes as well, that would be amazing. Thanks for all your support and I'll catch you guys in my next video. Peace!